Hello. Good afternoon. Can you hear me? Yes, now I can. All right. Are you Autumn Cheesebro? Yes, I am. I'm Judge Middleton. I'm here at the courthouse in Centerville. Your landlord, Mr. Sanderson, is here with me. He wants you to move from that property on River Run Road. The case is called a termination of tenancy action. And as such, you have certain rights as a defendant. Is this a mobile home? Um, it's a trailer, yes. Okay, it looks like that from what I'm seeing here. Um, at any rate, let me tell you what your rights are. As a defendant in a landlord-tenant proceeding, including termination of tenancy, you have the following legal rights. You have the right to obtain counsel for representation in this matter. If you cannot afford an attorney, a legal aid attorney may be available to help you. You have the right to a trial by a jury or by the court. If the action is for non-payment of rent, we would be going in a different direction, but this is filed as a termination of tenancy. If the plaintiff is agreeable, the Citizens Mediation Services, Inc. may be available as a possible source of case resolution. If both parties are agreeable to mediation, the court can help set that up. If you do reach an agreement with the plaintiff and a consent judgment is entered by the court, that happens quite often. You will waive the rights listed above, but have the following additional rights. The judgment may not be enforced until three business days have passed. You could move to set aside the judgment within those three days if you misunderstood what you consented to or what you were waiving. Your motion to set aside the judgment would be set for a landlord tenant hearing before the judge, namely me. But if I did not find in your favor, the original judgment would stand. So let's talk about this. Uh, Mr. Sanderson, is this property in a trust or anything, or you simply own it outright? I own it outright. All right. It's not an LLC or anything? No. All right. Very good. Uh, you can represent yourself when you own the property. Um, the notice to quit was served in December of 2022, and you list, uh, excuse me, October 7th of 22, breaking lease, destruction of property. Um, your rental agreement is weekly, so you have until November 16th to vacate the property. You currently owe $615 on your lease. The damages that occurred on October 6th will be over $1,000 to replace and repair everything. If you leave peacefully and without damaging anything else, you may not be responsible for the remaining balance of the lease and damages. If you choose not to vacate, you'll be taken to court and evicted and owe the balance of the lease and damages. Uh, the lease is from June 25th. 22 to June 25th of 23. So the lease is still in effect, but you're alleging damages. Um, Ms. Cheesebro, what's your position? Um, my position is that I was in a predicament where I um, had made a mistake. I'm aware I was in violation of my lease by allowing um, someone that was not on the lease to stay with me. However, he was my boyfriend at the time, and I was under the belief that he had changed and things were going to be better. Um, however, it turned into a big issue. He was um, sentenced on a domestic violence crime um, under you back in November. Yes. and. Um, what's his name? Kyle Spence. Yes. So, um, now that brings me to today, um, on October 6th, I was at work. Um, and I came home from work that day to an open house and no dog. So, um, Kyle had kicked in my door. This is after I had obtained the PPO 
and taken all the proper um, procedures that I needed to take to keep him away from me, um, he decided to show up here and kick in my door while I was working. Um, so there was no way that I could call authorities because I was not aware until I got home that day. Um, I came home, my dog was gone and I had a meltdown. That's the best way I can describe it. And um, so that's what brought us to court today. Um, prior to October 6th, I was under a verbal agreement with the property manager that so long as I was doing everything I needed to do as far as keeping Kyle off the property, that I would be okay. It didn't matter if I called the police and how many times, as long as I was making an attempt to keep him away from the property. Now on October 6th, I was not home. So every other time that Kyle was here, the cops were called either by me or one of my friends if it wasn't safe for me to do so and he was removed. Um, hello? Right, well, let's talk about this. Um, there are several issues here. You could benefit from some legal help. The Violence Against Women Act prohibits some evictions when women are subject to domestic violence or domestic assault. Your contention is that you had, Mr. Sanderson, let's pretend we're in court and I'd ask you to pay attention and stop whispering to the person that's there with you. I'm sorry. You're on live stream here and there are some issues that are gonna to need to be addressed. Um, we may have to check the dates. Your contention is you got a personal protection order to prohibit this person from being there. The problem is, let's see here, you let him in without consent, which could be a reason for terminating your tenancy. Paragraph five of your lease, tenant shall not allow any other person to occupy the premises for a period of 48 hours will be considered to be a violation of this lease. So yeah. the fact that you let him in there in the first place could be a violation of your lease. And I understand and, that. All right. And you said something that ladies often say to me, and you and I, we th I thought he had changed. I wish I had a dime for every time somebody told me that, because they haven't. Right. And uh, you got right back in the same difficult situation you were in. Is he in jail right now? Yes, he is. And it has been quiet here. Um, no disturbances of any kind. I keep to myself. I work. I work 12 hours a day a lot of the time. And I'm, I'm just, I'm just looking to um, basically not end up homeless and able to keep my job through all of this. I realized that I made a mistake and believing that he changed and even giving him another chance. Um, since that, since November, I have sought counseling um, through my work. They've provided help for me to make sure that I do not do this again because I realize there's something wrong with me if I think that that's okay. And I um, continue to accept that into my life because it's not okay. No, it's not okay. And I think I gave him 90 days to reinforce that. He gets out sometime in January. Um, no, it's not okay. Uh, but your landlord doesn't want you as a tenant anymore. And so yeah. one is alleging damage that you didn't do. And your co-tenant, he was no longer a tenant. He was prohibited by my court order from going there. So I went there in violation of the order. Where you've got a problem is letting him come in in the first place. And Mr. Sanderson's opinion is, I, because of that bad judgment, I don't want this woman as a tenant. Um, the law requires that I, is that correct, Mr. Sanderson? That's correct. Um, that I adjourn this matter for seven days. So I'm going to continue this. 
to better is uh, Marvin Sanderson. Mr. Sanderson, can you hear me? Yeah, I can. Versus Autumn Cheesebro. Uh, Mr. Roberts, is she going to be here or are you here on her behalf? I'm You're on mute. No, not you. No. You're going to appear on her behalf? Yes. Sorry, sorry Judge. I, I am appearing on her behalf. My understanding, though, that she was also going to appear. All right. Well, we need a way for her. Yeah. Mr. Sanderson, we adjourned this matter for a week, as the law requires, so she could pursue legal advice. Mr. Donald Roberts, who is the director at Western Michigan Legal Services, is here on her behalf. As she was telling me her story, I was concerned that she may have had some Violence Against Women Act defenses or other defenses to your request to terminate her tenancy. Um, so she has retained the services of an attorney. So as soon as she gets here, I think she's here now. Yes, here she is. Ms. Cheesebro, can you hear me? Yes. All right. Uh, Mr. Donald Roberts from Legal Aid is here on your behalf. Your landlord, Mr. Sanderson, is here. We were previously here seven days ago on December the 12th. Uh, Mr. Sanderson has served a notice to quit on you. He wants you to move. He alleges destruction of property. And there is a lease which is still in effect, actually. It's from June of 22 to June of 23. So he is attempting to establish good cause to terminate your tenancy. Um, he alleges that the good cause is the destruction of the property. It's your contention, at least it was last week, that you didn't do it, that uh, a, a boyfriend or ex-boyfriend did it, and I put him in jail uh, for quite a while, I think as long as I could. Uh, he doesn't have an outdate until January 15th. At any rate, uh, Mr. Donald Roberts is here on behalf of the defendant. Uh, he's filed an appearance. Mr. Roberts, what's your position? Well, um, as the court was indicating, we believe that uh, Ms. Chewsbro does have some defenses to this action based on the fact that she's a survivor of domestic violence and that eviction um, or based on the alleged breach of the lease actually is um, probably is in violation of the Fair Housing Act and the Michigan Fair Housing Act and, and so on and so forth. I haven't had an opportunity because of the short notice to fully develop that in my answer. Um, it's limited mostly to um, the technical issues with respect to the pleadings. However, um, I haven't seen uh, an answer. Did you file one? Yes, with the should have came with the appearance, Judge. I got disconnected. I have a appearance, but no answer. So maybe it's floating around here somewhere. Okay. Did you get an answer, Mr. Sanderson? No. Okay. No, I, I it was sent probably two hours ago, Judge. All right. And I didn't have the information I needed to send it to Mr. Sanderson electronically. All right. So it's your contention this matter is going to need a hearing. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Sanderson, what's your position? Uh, my, my position is 
uh, you know, this boyfriend that uh, uh, she's got, she she doesn't, uh, uh, she's got a PPO against him, but she doesn't abide by it. You know, she, she lets him move in for five days, uh, you know, and, and then, he, and then this boyfriend oh. threatens the life of the next door neighbor. I mean, he threatened to kill him verbally. No, you know, that before you know, the PPO. Ms. Cheeseboro, Ms. Cheeseboro, we're in a court here. And we're not sitting around the kitchen table. You don't just shout stuff out because you feel like it. In fact, you have a lawyer here who's here to speak on your behalf. I so apologize. I'll give you a chance to say anything if your lawyer wants to be allow me to, but don't just blurt things out. This is a court proceeding. So Mr. Sanderson, uh, when she told me her story last week, I thought there would be some issues. I mentioned the Fed Violence Against Women Act, which is a federal statute. And then there's also the Fair Housing Act, which is both federal and the Michigan statute. And Mr. Roberts's position is you can't terminate her lease for her boyfriend beating her up and kicking in her door. Now, you may allege that he threatened other people in the place, your, your pleadings are not the greatest. Um, let's see what you put. Your rental agreement is weekly, so you have until November 16th to vacate the property. You currently owe $6,105 on your signed lease. The damage that has occurred on over six, October 6th will be over $1,000 to replace and repair everything. If you lease peacefully and without damaging anything else, you may not be responsible for the remaining balance of the lease and the damages. If you choose not to vacate, you will be taken to court and evicted over the balance of the lease and damages. Now, if she owes you more than $6,000 in back rent, you could have filed this as a non-payment of rent case, in which case she either pays the rent or moves. Is there more than a $6,000 rent arrearage, Mr. Sanderson? Uh, no, there's not. She's she's kept up on her rent. All right, so that's for damage to the property? What, that's for the fine... That is for the total lease of, of the property and and uh, and damages. But her rent is current through December. Yes. Well, I have you're at a disadvantage. Just a minute. You're at a disadvantage because she has a lawyer and you don't. And I don't think you have a good understanding of Michigan housing law, uh, the Fair Housing Act. Landlord Tenant Relationship Act and uh, the other statutes that apply to this. Uh, but she's in the lease is still in effect. Her rent is current. You are alleging that she had violated the lease by destruction of property, is what you've alleged. Okay. And that's it. So it's pretty vague as your reason to terminate the lease. It doesn't specifically cite to a section of the lease. Um, her contention is, I didn't damage the property. Someone else did who I had a PPO against to prohibit him from being there. Now, it's your position that she let him there voluntarily in violation of the PPO, which is quite common and that he threatened other tenants and did damage. You didn't do a very good job of pleading it. There's nothing in there regarding this gentleman, Mr. Spence, threatening anybody else. Um, and Mr. Roberts hasn't filed a full answer in this matter as well. So I'm gonna do an escrow order. How much is the rent each month, Mr. Sanderson? It's a, a weekly. Okay, how much per week? Um, hang on just a second. 165. Mm -hmm. 
All right. You know, an escrow order, let me look at the lease. Yes, 165 per week on Fridays. So you're going to continue to pay the rent, but you're going to pay it to the court. Okay. In which case I will hold on to it until we figure out what the circumstance is. Um, I need a better answer from the defendant. Your Honor, again, that you have not, you haven't seen the one I filed electronically earlier. I take it. No, I haven't. It might okay. be there with the clerk, but it hasn't come to me now. I no, I just wanted to make sure. I'll certainly send that one off in the mail today. All right. Now the other problem is I don't know where to put this. Uh, we're missing a Friday and a Monday, a Friday and a Monday, another Monday for. Uh, Month of the King Day and a Friday and a Monday because I'm gone. So I was going to do some landlord tenant matters on January 25th. So I'm going to continue this matter until Wednesday, January 25th at 3.30. Your, your honor yes i'm going to be in florida from the first of january through the end of february well you can certainly call in by zoom just like you are now um is that acceptable you want me to put it all the way out to march i i, I don't have i don't have the facilities to do that oh my um what are you using right now to call in? My computer. Oh, it's my secretary's uh, uh, apparatus. All here, right. Well, here at the business. Well, she's going to have to continue to pay the rent. Also, Kyle Spence shall not be on that property. Can you see, sir? He's in jail right now, but his outdate is January 15th. When when he gets out of jail, he's going to go there. Uh, uh, yeah. If he is, she's in violation of my order. Uh, he, he, he was living there on October 23rd and November 2nd. No, he wasn't. All right. Uh, well, we'll find out. He isn't to be there under any circumstance. A, he's in violation of his PPO, and B, it's going to make it real easy at that point for Mr. Sanderson to terminate your tenancy. Um, but he's not available till March, which is to your benefit. One suggestion as you start looking for another place to move to. I have been, Ron. What's that? I have been. I'm going to continue this to March 6, 2023 at 2 p.m. If you move before then, contact Mr. Sanderson's staff, turn in the keys, and the matter can be dismissed. You just got a giant Christmas present from Mr. Sanderson and from the way the calendar is. Um, I haven't got anywhere to put an immediate hearing. So I have to go out to January and like many people, he's getting out of Michigan in the winter. So that takes us all the way to March 6th. You ought to be able to move by then, in which case the whole thing could get dismissed. But if Mr. Spence is at that property, um, that's grounds to terminate your tenancy. Now, in the meantime, you're to pay your $165 per month rent to me. I'm going to send you an escrow order.
order and I will hold on to the rent while we're dealing with this. I'm a little reluctant to do that because it's so far out. Mr. Sanderson, I'm going to hold on to the rent. And uh, that doesn't do very good for you to pay your note, but uh, you're moving to terminate her tenancy and she says she doesn't want to move. I want to make sure that she pays the rent. Um, so one option is to leave it in, a, in place. Um, I'm just going to indicate 165 per week rental remains in effect. So I don't want to hold on to 10 weeks worth of rent. Mr. Sanderson uses that to pay his note and taxes and that sort of thing. So Your, Your Honor, I, I, we wouldn't object if there were um, some mechanism, say once every, once every, at the end of every month, there could be a partial distribution. The issue here is not payment of rent, it's current. Um, if the court wants her to pay it to the court, I'll just that's leave fine. it as it is. Mr. Sanderson, if she stops paying the rent, you contact the court and I can do an escrow order. But in the meantime, Ms. Cheeseboro, you're going to look for a place to move to, and maybe that'll solve the whole thing. Do you have questions? No, thank you. All right, Mr. Sanderson, do you have any questions? Yes, not, no. All right, that's the best I got. 